In the beginning, all was darkness. Until all of us. Hang on. And then all of a sudden, there was. That's it. And then there was light! <laughs> G'day everyone, I'm Jazza, and today I'm gonna to be trying to make art with candles. I was thinking, you know what, six million subscribers, maybe I should start a cult. At least I was going to start a cult, and then I got all these candles for culty rituals, and I thought, you know what, they're scented and they're brightly colored, I could make art with that. So I used the opportunity while swatching, basically putting all my colors down onto a white paper to see how they show and what their opacity and color quality was like, and I used the opportunity to coordinate my colors a little bit as I went. So after I got my bearings with the colors and translucency, which I was pleasantly surprised by to be honest, they look really cool. Next it's time to experiment with some of the ways that the wax reacts and can be put down. If I'm gonna do anything ambitious with this, I need to know the different ways I can apply it. I tried a variety of different applicators. A brush, which I knew would ruin the brush, was okay. Pretty happy enough with that, that I could use it. However, sponges are no go. Obviously wax is not able to be absorbed into a sponge and a sponge is just gonna like set with the wax on and in it. So it doesn't really apply to the surface, but actually scrapers and clay sculpting tools I think will be the most useful, both in applying and then maybe in some parts carving or texturing. It also occurred to me that while I really can't push this idea much on paper, remelting the wax once it has been placed down could probably be a really useful asset in an artwork that I create with this medium. Then we have drawing, which I tried to make more accurate by cutting a channel into this red candle and dripping it through that channel. That actually worked surprisingly well. I was able to have quite a lot of control and once the flow had gotten going, I could get some reasonably predictable and not too painful line work down. I'm feeling pretty good after this dabble, enough to make my first piece. But before I do that, there is one last thing I want to attempt, and that is sort of putting down as much as possible quickly without burning and without losing too much accuracy. Fire time. Basically, like if I have a line work area I want to color in, yeah, I can just go like, but as you can see, you get a splat and it just goes everywhere quick. So I may actually want to have like some sort of container on the side that I just pour the initial dump onto. That sounds... Did, but I'm wondering if with a fairly solid open flame and if I get rid of the excess wax, if I can get a heavy flow happening pretty quick. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's what I want to see. The first thing that came to mind as I'm doing this, I'm like, okay, it's got a really cool watery effect because in the deeper areas, the color's stronger. And then also I have this like yellowy green area here that it's like butting up against. And I'm like, that looks like a map. I could make a map with this. And I reckon that's actually the coolest way to, to make my first piece doing something with some geography and landscape would be really cool with a candle wax feel, getting that flow and using those organ organic shapes and flows. So to work off of a more convenient service, we jumped into laser cutting a piece of a white acrylic, which would serve as my base. I went for something just under an A3 size, which I thought would be big, but not too big, especially because this isn't gonna be my grand finale piece yet. And I sketched out a bit of a map on my white acrylic to work off of. Starting off by putting down all the geometry and then trying to scuff it back a bit so it wasn't too obvious later down the line if there was a little bit of translucency. And the map design I decided to go with was one I'm most familiar with. The Land of Sunder, my own role-playing campaign. <laughs> I, okay, look, shameless here, but I have also already made this map in stunningly huge detail. So if you want to go check out that video where I made my entire game's map to a very large and very impressive scale, linked in the card and in the description. If you want to check out my personal role-playing campaign, you can check that out over on Tabletop Time Roleplay, a channel dedicated to our roleplay shenanigans and epic stories. So back to the map, after creating a border with gaffer tape so 
the spills wouldn't happen. As you can see, I've melted down a mixture of different candles to create a bit of an earthier brown color. I haven't got any brown candles, so I had to sort of improvise and make my own, or at least wax color. And it worked pretty well. I did a little bit of a test before going fully into it and I cooked up a whole pot of molten brown wax. And I poured that down into my acrylic bowl, which worked really well and then also immediately started warping and bending the acrylic, which unnerved me slightly. I just tried to hold it in place and bend it back as the heat was slowly dissipating and tried to forge on hoping for the best. And from here, the process was pretty straightforward. That was probably the most heat that would be applied to my piece all in one go. So I wasn't too worried about warping as each new layer would have the heat dissipated through the wax underneath it one layer at a time. And slowly I built up to more rich and luscious greens, and built up the topography of the map to create more of the mountainous areas later. The layers that were building left for really interesting colors in the offcuts, which was really cool. I think there could be some really cool effects in this. And I used some of those offcuts to build up those mountains and softening them with heat, continued to press and mold them into a mountainous shape, eventually capping the mountain tops by painting in a white wax with my rough brush. There was a bit of push and pull here. I was trying to carve out some areas to show a bit more of the brown where it might be more deserty and melt in more of the greens to create more foresty areas. And of course, with each major layer of wax that I put down, I had to carve back those rivers to create a satisfying river flow later. With the map all coming together, it now is time to add in some of the details. The tree areas, which rather than going in with a green, which I thought wouldn't show very clearly, I actually went with a dark brown because by painting it in thinly, it actually only mildly added opacity and added a bit of a nice texture. That works quite well for the forest areas. And now I was ready to add in the water. I wanted it to look a little deeper in the central areas of the sea and the coast. So I started off with my darker blue, just pouring it straight in the middle. And when that was solidified, I ground down a bunch of a lighter blue candle, melted it down and did my final pour. Last but not least, the capital of Greydale in this central map region and Sunder is Iron Spire, at the helm of which is a giant Iron Spire structure. I felt it was only fitting to turn my giant wax artwork into a giant candle. Not the most practical candle, but you know what? I think it looks pretty bloody cool. The result is way, way cooler than I imagined. I know I started off that whole like section with like, you know, oh, it's not the hero piece, it's not the final piece. This to me could be the payoff of like the bigger piece in an art video. This is a way more compelling art medium than I expected. So with that said, now it's time for the final dive and I have an idea as to what I should do. I'll give you a clue. I think this one will turn your expectations on what candles can be used for upside down. Um, let's, good, I, good if one, if I one. only could make a deal with God, I'd get him to hit that like button and subscribe for more art and creativity. Stranger Things. I'm doing Vecna. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Vecna from Stranger Things, specifically the villain in season four, the later season. For those of you who haven't watched or kept up with Stranger Things, no big deal. He's basically just some big demon-y looking humanoid dude with burnt looking waxy skin. Oh, waxy, hey, funny that. I'm working with candle wax, so that's sort of perfect. As you can see, I'm working with an acrylic sheet this time around, because I thought the translucency of the wax could be something I could really push and play with here. And with my sketch of Vecna in place, it was time to start waxing it up. After that had set, I went in and carved it back to create indentations where the light would come in. Now this is where I found it a really interesting medium to work with. First of all, the textures and the natural spatters and everything just looked really cool and very fitting for a, a burnt skin type like this. But secondly, there was a natural sort of push and pull between light and shade. After the first layer, I carved away where the light would appear and then poured a bunch of different light and brightly colored waxes, mainly in blues, purples, and reds, and they filled out the mid-tones and created highlights. I also found it interesting that because I wanted to work with translucency, thickness adds opacity and therefore darkness, and I could carve back dark areas to create room for where light wax would brighten areas 
or carve back bright areas for where dark wax would bring in shadows. By this stage, it was really hard to make out any of the details in my initial sketch and also any of the details I was carving. So I used a backlight underneath Vecna, put down some baking paper just to protect the backlight and continue the process one layer at a time, alternating between adding darker colors and shadows, then carving out where the highlights would go, then pouring in highlight layers and carving out where more shadow would go. Step by step, building up detail and bringing Vecna to life. As Vecna was shaping up and solidifying, I was really happy with how this is coming together. But as you can tell, with every layer of wax, I was washing out the details or any of the sharpness that I'd created. So now came the final step, carving out the final areas of highlights and starting to specifically create sharp carved indentations for where I could have edge highlights around the sides of Vecna's face and around some of the sharper folds of his skin. With my semi-final details added, I went through one more time and added some light blues on the left side of the piece to fill in some of those highlight areas and yellows and oranges on the other side of the piece. This would wash out some of the details, but then I was just left to do one more pass of detail, carving out and softly gentling with a blowtorch the final sharpest highlights on the edges creating a wax figure, painting or sculpture, I'm not even sure which at this point, that feels like a demon that you would be truly terrified if you started having visions of. I'm pleased and horrified to present to you Candle Vecna. My God. Now, this is the unlit piece, but even so, there's something, I don't know, it's sort of cool, sort of waxy, but honestly, the surprising winner of this is the translucency <gasps> of the candles. It just really is so fun to do that slightly transparent feel. It actually looks fleshy and burned because it's wax. And I have to say, I have experimented with many mediums in my day. I've sculpted blue tack. I've painted with mops and crayons, but I have to say, Painting or painting slash sculpting, it's a weird hybrid of both, with candles is uh, one of my surprise favorites. From my surprisingly impressive, at least in my eyes, landscape, like this is a diorama made of candle wax. What the hell? And then Vecna backlit in all his glory. I'm just so, so chuffed. And if you're as chuffed as I am, please consider hitting that like button because it really does help people see my content, it helps me know you love this video and you want to see me push myself in these sort of ways. Thank Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Uh, what are you doing? I'm in the upside down, Gareth. You're, you're putting me in the upside down in post. That's a lot of work, so I'm just gonna leave you floating there. Uh, at least upside down. Okay, upside down. You're upside down. Can you add particles? Uh, okay, and there you go. Can you add end cards? Uh, there you go. Ah, oh, what a bloody legend. I, oh, I like that video, that's a good one. Which one, that one? Yeah. Or that one? Uh, the left hand side. Your left. Good.